Hi and um, welcome to the second of these tutorial videos about how to use the IFM condition monitoring software VES004. In the first tutorial we made a connection to one of the VSE diagnostic modules, in this case a VSE002. Now that we've made that connection, the next thing we need to do is actually create a parameter set which will enable us to monitor the, the fault conditions that the specific machine may generate. So, um, what we'll do is double click on parameter and that gives us this window open over the right here, okay? Um, all we're really doing is starting from the top and working down. Um, that, that's just the structure that the, the software takes. It doesn't allow you to add things further down without something further up being allocated to it. Um, but that should hopefully become clear over the next five, ten minutes. Um, common configuration, so this just shows us um, the minimum firmware required for this um, version of the software. Documentation, we can put in information about who the customer is. Um, a bit more information about who created the, the file, etc. Um, the device, if we were already connected, what things like the inputs and outputs we're doing. And assigned devices is the specific VSE002 module that I'm connected to with um, IP address and MAC address also. Um, but the most important stuff is when we start getting to the inputs. So the first thing you have to tell is how many dynamic inputs. So these would normally be accelerometers. And um, you can either just left click there and then the activate and activate button. Or if I right click and click activate there. And that's now brought up a window uh, asking me to give it more information about sensor one. Okay. So sensor one, you can if you want change the name there, so that could be you know, motor drive end, motor non-drive end, depending on the location of the machine, and, and also what type of sensor as well. So um, the default is a VSA001, 245 or 6, which are the, the MEMS-based accelerometers that IFM do, but we also have the ability, for example, if you have a piezoelectric, to put in how many millivolts per G and it will then um, work with those as well. But I have a VSA001 connected in. You also have the ability to put uh, some filtering on the sensor itself. So the default is a high pass filter of two hertz, but that can be changed to either no filter or, or 10 hertz, but we'll leave it on two for this. And the engineering units G and 25G are grayed out because they, they relate to the actual parameters of the, the VSA001. The other option you have here is self-test. So if I was to tick this box and change that to say every six hours, the, the VSC002 module will perform a self-test of the MEMS accelerometer to make sure it's still within spec as if it came straight out of the box. And if it detected a problem or the wire was broken or the sensor had been damaged, um, the VSC module would then alarm to the control system to confirm that the, the sensors uh, no longer working correctly. So for, for my parameter set, I'm just gonna have one accelerometer input. Um, I'm also going to have a, a temperature signal. So this would come in on the analog inputs in one and in two. Um, you could also have sensor two, three or four as a four to 20 milliamp signal. Um, if you want, you would just activate it and then click down here DC current but I have it wired into input one so I'll deactivate that and activate by right clicking on input one. Um, so input one I'm going to change that to temperature so it means a bit more when I look in my parameter set here. It's an analog current but we also have the ability to bring in like digital inputs or pulse width modulation as well um, as an example and we'll change the engineering unit to degree C. Um, it then asks me for the, the range of the sensor, so my 4 milliamp point is 0 degree C and my 20 milliamp point in this instance will be 100. The machine I'm working on is also a um, variable speed machine, so I'm going to activate analog input 2 and it defaults to RPM. Now my machine here, I'm just going to change that to speed as well and the range of this is 0 to 29 
40. Okay. So, so far I've told it that I have one accelerometer input coming on, dynamic input sensor one, a temperature signal coming in, and a variable speed signal coming in. External inputs, this would be if we had, um, say the, the system is working over OPC, so we could be sent through the, from the SCADA system, information like speed, but um, I have that coming in hardwired, so I'm going to delete that. If we were working on one of the VSE 1.5 modules, so those are the ones with a fuel bus interface, you could actually have things like speed information coming over the, the Profinet or Ethernet IP. So the next thing we have to set up is triggers. So when we come to setting up the objects, for instance on balance, um, looking for pairing defects, we need to tell it what trigger that these relate to. So new trigger, and we're going to set up based on an analog input. Now, the analog input is not temperature because we want these to be based on the speed. And this means as the speed changes, anything that's related to here that's looking for individual frequencies related to the speed of the machine will track up and down the frequency spectrum as the speed of the machine changes. The other thing you're allowed to do here is well set up a working range. So this allows us to not monitor from 0 RPM and above. So we can maybe start from say 600 and that allows us to just get past any excess vibrations that are caused by the machine speeding up and slowing down from scratch. And the working range you can just put the same as the um, the maximum speed of the machine or just a touch higher just in case it, it gets past that and um, at least we're still monitoring the parameters. If we did have a fixed speed machine, all we would do is new trigger, uh, constant speed and just type in the value there. But I'll just delete that for now. Okay, that's deleted. So come to set up the objects. So these are the actual parameters that we're going to be monitoring on the machine. So if you right click, we have object wizard, bearing wizard, or just new object. So the first one we'll set up is an unbalance. So this is look, looking at one times rotational speed of the machine. If we had more than one vibration sensor, there would be the drop down box here where we would tell it what sensor this relates to, but we only have one. The name there again, you can change if you like. Um, we have one trigger set up, which is the speed. So it defaults to that as well. And it also puts in some alarm limits um, based on what um, this thinks more around kind of ISO standards. And we also have averaging as well, where we can sort of damp down the signal. So rather than working on every calculation and referring to that number, we can maybe take every four calculations and then the number that's the average of those four is the value that the, the software would calculate from. We can also put in response delays here as well so that if something does go into alarm, it holds that off for a period of time until it physically alarms, just to stop any spurious signalling. Um, the next parameter we will do is we will try and look for misalignment on the machine. So what we want to do with that is others, and that allows us to actually set fault frequencies based as multiples of the, the speed frequency. So if I go to sub-objects, so, and then click on add a new one. We can just put in two. Three times. And four times. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the one times. So all we're looking at is activity two, three, and four times the um, the speed frequency. So I'm going to change that from peak to an RMS measurement as well. And just to confirm that we're going to look in FFT and change that to velocity as well. And the trigger this is based on is the analog speed input range. So as the speed changes, the two, three, and four times speed frequencies will also change up and down the spectrum. And limits as well. We can put in where we want to either have warning limit at say five and three as an example. And again, we can put in some averaging here as well if you like. Okay. Um, I'm just going to right click there and rename that so it means something. So 
I could have done that in the, the window to the right here, but I'm going to change that from 2x to 4x. Okay. So the next one we're going to set up to look for looseness, rotational looseness on the machine. So this time we want to set up sub objects between 2 and 10 times the speed. So change that to RMS and we'll add in. and 10. And what I'll do is I will remove the the one times because that will um, probably mask all the other ones so if we we're already monitoring one times anyway as the unbalance so if we'll just the one times then I will remove that. So we're now looking at 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 times rotational speed all lumped together as one particular object. That's being done FFT millimeters a second. It's relating to the speed. And we'll set, um, say, four and maybe two for that. Um, the next parameter we will set up is just to the ISO 10816 standard, so we can set up um, RMS velocity. We can do that in either the frequency or the time domain. It doesn't make a great deal of difference, so I'm just going to do frequency domain. And if I change, just for neatness, change that to there. Um, the default for that is 10 to 1000 hertz. Um, there's no trigger here because that's just looking at 10 to 1000 hertz, regardless of the speed and it puts in some levels based on the ISO standards and again we can change the averaging if we like. So I'm just going to go back to this third one here and rename it just so it means a bit more rather than others. So if I change that to 2x, 10x, okay. So we we'll also want to monitor uh, bearing. So we can either do um, bearing or bearing wizard. We'll do bearing wizard, it's the same end result, so we can just, we only have one or just tick that one individually on its own. It's sensor one. We can change the name if we like there. Um, what we'll do is we'll just change and put the bearing number in. So it's a 6210 in this case. Um, the default here is to browse the bearing database, but there is the ability to take bearing calculator and put in some measurements and contact angles and the software will work out the frequencies that bearing will generate. Um, manually input the frequency factors from the data sheet of the bearing, um, but the easiest is Browse Bearing Database. This software has a database of thousands of different bearings, and if I was to type in 6210 search, and it's an SKF 6210 in this case, tick that, and then next. That's the frequency factors, a window around each one just to to catch um, a little bit of difference in the speed from what we're telling it and click click on next we have the ability to if there's any gear ratios between the speed signal that's coming in and where we're measuring but in this case it's there's not it's just a one-to-one -one ratio because it's on the same machine puts in some alarm limits here but again we can change those if we like and finish so that's now put in a bearing for us we will also look for peak acceleration. So this is looking for the, the maximum acceleration level, either in a positive or a negative direction, and calculating based on that. So I'm just gonna remove the time for neatness. So it's on sensor one. Processing, we can have no filter. There's various high pass, low pass, band pass filters. 
So I'll maybe just set a high pass, say 975 hertz. Um, there's no triggering there because it's just looking at that frequency range regardless of speed. The levels, say if I wanted to put maybe, so these are milli G's, so say 4,000 milli G's, so 4 G's and maybe 2,000 for that. And if we want to do averaging as well, um, again, we can put that in there as well. Also. The last parameter I'll set up, we'll set up, because we have a temperature sensor coming in, we'll set up what's called an upper limit monitor. So that allows us to set a yellow and a red alarm as the temperature increases. Um, the other one that was there was a lower limit, which is a yellow and red limit as the temperature gets colder. But we'll just set an upper limit monitor in this case. Um, so we have the inputs coming from temperature. Sub-objects and processing are greyed out, nothing to tick there. There's nothing to do with triggers. Limits we can set, say, damage at maybe 50 degrees C, warning at 40, okay. Averaging, we can average that out as well, but it tends to be quite slow moving, so uh, the temperature, so we don't need to worry about that. Um, variance, this is where we can actually sort of start grouping things together so we can have, you know, um, different things happen depending if one or more uh, different alarm states are met. I'll leave that for now. Um, counters, so there's various counters that we can set. Um, for instance, if I set how long the VSC has been on, totalize, or how long analog signals have been running, um, object state. So if I wanted to say maybe peak acceleration, if that's on for a minute or to 10 minutes so that I can then set an alarm group so that this would come out as a, a separate alarm so that when peak acceleration had been in, in alarm for a total of 10 minutes we would get a separate output to confirm that History function, um, everything's defaulted here to 30 minutes um, and that gives us working of this firmware down the bottom there, 1,374 days before it overwrites itself. Um, if I wanted to bring that down and grab a bit more information, I can just either click on them individually or if I double click that pencil there, I can just change them all. If I change them all to 10 minutes. That's then given me 458 days before um, the software will overwrite itself. Uh, alarms, so we can right click new alarm so we can set warnings, that's a common yellow. And we have the source, because it's a common it defaults to just any of the parameters hitting where the yellow, the, the warning threshold is, it alarms. Or we can also set the yellow one to be the, um, the self-test alarm output as well. And if we also want, we can set a, say a common red damage alarm. And again, the source would be uh, anything that hits the, the red alarm. So now that I'm happy with that parameter set, if I go up to this icon here, write parameters to the device, click on, and that's now sent everything to the card. I can al already see that um, at least one parameter is uh, in a yellow state because we have this overall icon here that changes from green to yellow to red. But I will cover more about uh, analysing data in the next tutorial video after this. Thank you.